I know a lot of affiliates. Uh, I might as well just open this up to them too. Cause then as well, I can learn more from them. Yeah. I'll always like chatting with these affiliates. So if they're putting up numbers, there's something to talk about there. So I started the network and I just kind of, just kind of took off from there. I was selling a domain names in my school just to get some money, you know. But I think I was like 16 or 17, we had like a, a police raid, you know. They were advertising so much on TV, consumers would go and look for more information online, and that's where I scooped them up. They needed some international SEO advice, and they got in touch with me, right? So I, I knew that I had something that's extraordinary, that we can scale this, like, mm -hmm. very, because it's super hard to copy this product. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Conversations with a Marketer. My name is Chad Wilton, and today we have Anthony Paluzzi joining us. He is a paper call expert. Um, we discuss the evolution of the industry, trending verticals, what affiliates can do if they've never tested out paper call, but break into the scene and see some quick wins out the gate. Um, you know, we even touch a little bit more on voice search, what I normally try to squeeze in there. So, a personal favorite topic of mine. Um, we are going to jump right into it. So the first question is uh, what he was doing prior to the industry, because I always love the responses of these. Hope you all enjoy another conversations with a marketer. So before I got into this space, uh, I worked for a cable TV provider, uh, Comcast. Uh, I'm not sure if they want me saying their name, but I worked for Comcast and uh, I did local marketing for sales for them essentially and part of my role was to uh, get them to I'm sorry part of my role was to get more sales uh, over the phone so I, I had to get more people to call me now that was cool at the time it was it was a, a bit easier but I had to find certain ways to adapt as a marketer and so I discovered um, I discovered really uh, what Google search is, what are all these different techniques to get in front of a consumer who's looking to make a phone call. And so I learned to hone in my skills there on what's local marketing, what's search and all that. Uh, and then one day I was looking for an apartment and I hopped on Craigslist and I found a badass apartment, it looked great, looked too good to be true. So yeah. when I emailed them, they sent me back an email and they said, Hey, we'd love to have you come look at this, but we need to know how good your credit is. So, Oh, I love where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can already see it now. So click this link, see where, uh, click this link and go get your credit report and send it back to us. And I thought that's weird. Why can't I just give them one of my credit reports? Why don't I have to click this link? Yeah. So I looked at the link being the skeptic. And the link was for cj.com. So it was Commission Junction. Commission Junction, yeah. And uh, I was like, all right, let me check out this CJ shit. So I, I clicked cj.com. I went onto the site. And uh, and I just started to kind of like mess around and get curious. And then I saw something that said paper call. I wrapped my head around it a bit. And then I realized I'm already doing this yeah. right now for Comcast. And I'd love to see what this is. So I applied. I became a affiliate. And uh, I, I realized that they're paying people to generate phone calls for different types of industries, different types of programs. Comcast yeah. was actually one of those programs on there, which was kind of. Yeah, ironic. I remember Comcast being on Neverblue back in the day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was, that was on there. And so I just legit found affiliate marketing by accident. And then. I just started running offers. I just, uh, <laughs> that was it. I just was like, okay, so I guess now with my Google search campaign in one city, mm -hmm. I just head over to that location setting feature and open it up to the States. And that's what I did. And I kind of uh, hauled the breadcrumb from there. But uh, that hilarious. was kind of like my origin area. So wait, so just to take a step back uh, to Comcast. So you were also the guy that was handling the phone calls or you were just generating leads for Comcast? Um, so, all right, so I'll break it down a bit more. They wanted me to knock doors to make sales. And okay. in my head, I was like, I can't, no, I don't want to do that. So I figured out different ways to market myself rather mm -hmm. than going out and finding the sales by legit knocking on someone's door. 
I let the customers come to me. And so I decided I'm going to take the marketing first approach and let those individuals find me and um, essentially call me. And so I took those calls in that came in from my cell phone and I would just sign people up over this, over my phone. And uh, That's yeah, a lot of people didn't like it <clears throat> because I wasn't technically knocking doors. So I got some haters, but yeah. uh, it worked. And so, yeah, so, that's where I started. So, uh, I mean, even digging deeper, like where did you learn? Like, was it just on Google or any forums? How did you pick up the skills to set up a campaign or just running ads? So, uh, how did I, how did I learn it? I, I just, I guess extremely, uh, organically, if that makes sense. I just figured mm -hmm. out when I needed to go find something, where did I go? And so I went to Google. And Google yeah. at that time, uh, it was super, super basic. There wasn't anything around making a phone call. It was just, you put the phone number in the text ad. Yeah. And then they started to introduce ads on WAP phones, so flip phones. And then from yeah. there was smartphones. So I just legit started, where does a consumer go and find things? <clears throat> they find things on Google, they find things on Craigslist. But Google's the biggest thing I know. Let me go look. And then I signed up for a Google AdWords account. Yeah. And... And then I just became kind of a mad scientist in figuring out what this is. Like, I got to learn more about this shit because this looks really cool. And so yeah. I used Google's resources. Uh, I used my own, uh, just browsing on the internet. There wasn't a yeah. lot at that time for me. It was 2010. Okay. And so, um, so I just kind of taught myself in a way and yeah. utilized some Google ad reps, which I feel like a month in, I already knew more than them. So no yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Anyone who knows a Google ad rep knows that they don't really do too much for you. You got to figure it out yourself. So as a mm -hmm. noob, I was like, Oh, okay, cool. I'm feeling good about myself. <laughs> so yeah. And then I met other affiliates and then I just chat, I just had discussions with them and then they showed me forums and stuff like that. Stack that money was one of the first ones. Mm -hmm. um, I actually created a little video series on how to do mobile ads myself. Nice. Uh, and I had a much thicker Boston accent back then. So when I listen <laughs> to it, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, nostalgic. That's, Where can that's we find of, that if we want to? I'm not showing that shit to anyone. <laughs> no, no, it's out there. You guys got to find it yourself. That's, oh, that's I'm sure easier. I can. Um, <laughs> So I mean, so Comcast was kind of your initial um, campaign where I mean you fell into and there was success uh, off mm -hmm. of CJ. What kind of campaigns were you getting to in 2010? So since I knew cable TV and I kind of knew that consumer mindset, I stuck with that, and then mm -hmm. I just stuck with brand name uh, offers that had mass appeal. So mm -hmm. I did things like Allstate, uh, Devry University. Anything and everything cable TV. Uh, I also did a shit ton on the work from home type of pro. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. exercise from home type of program. Oh, okay. yeah. um, like Beachbody, P90X, Beachbody, huge P90X, yeah. Brazilian booty or something. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, dude. Those campaigns were amazing, and those were one of the first big paper call focused campaigns. And they were advertising so much on TV, but mm -hmm. those consumers would go and look for more information online. And that's where yep. I scooped them up. And so we Perfect. worked with the, uh, I, I had a direct relationship with the AOR. So they were able to provide a lot of feedback, which helped me optimize. And um, so, so to that, essentially, I worked with anything that had a really good brand attached to it and mm -hmm. had mass appeal to kind of like a nationwide audience. So yeah. those, were the, those are the ones. Yeah, so in, in that sense, you're just doing long tail keywords, gathering up leads that are already looking for them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Driving to a landing page, getting them to call. It wasn't call only ads back then. So you had to do something to get them to make a phone call. Uh, so yeah, just drive them to a page that was disgusting looking, but it would convert. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, that was it. And as, as the industry evolved, I remember, fuck, uh, when was it? Like 2012? maybe actually 2010 or 2011 um, call tracking coming into place and everyone just trying to yeah. wrap their heads around it. And on the network side, affiliate managers didn't know what to do. Affiliates, like in your case, you're mm -hmm. saying knew way more than account reps. Um, how has that evolved over time coming from something where you're just putting a phone number into the ad text versus now where you can have all sorts of routing in place and tracking? 
Yeah. Uh, as you just asked that, I realized I was wearing an Invoca sweatshirt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this isn't product placement. They didn't pay me. Mm -hmm. um, so it, routing and tracking has, it's, it's, it's bananas how much it's evolved. Uh, before it was just attributing a phone number to a publisher and gathering up some details on that caller to <clears throat> different types of routing based upon who that caller may be, appending data to that caller in terms of finding uh, who their, like what their demographic profile is and then routing that to a buyer, let's say who can work that caller. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, AB split testing, IVRs, um, even ping trees, like yeah. a ping tree when tapping into these big feed suppliers have, mm -hmm. has, has grown tremendously. So, um, so much has evolved right now. I I just, just as you mentioned, IVRs, do you have any um, funny IVR stories of like listening back to recordings and just horror stories of clients on the other end not knowing maybe A, what this person's trying to sell, on, sell them and trying to yeah. hook them on like a 30 second conversion duration or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I remember I mean, listening to some that are just mad. Oh, it was, uh, li I mean, listening to calls is a, it's a fine line of like privacy and then should you be listening to it? But the ones we should be listening to, there's so many great stories. Uh, like, well, first the IVRs that we would record, like using my voice was ridiculous at some times because I, I, I gotta, I gotta think someone called from my area at once. If they saw my ad and was like, hey, is that Anthony? Like, yeah. is he on that phone? <laughs> but I mean, I've heard people who, uh, I mean, we've had, we've had celebrities call in before uh, and managers of, well, management of celebrities where they would ask certain things and they'd say, well, you have to keep this confidential. Yeah. Uh, and obviously we had to keep that confidential too. Um, you know, just the typical person screaming at our clients. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've had, we, we get sometimes we get just random calls that come in where it's a pre-recorded message of someone preaching a religion, things right. like that. So there's all kinds of stuff that come in. Uh, what, have, a, what have been, what have been some of the more creative ways to hack the system and what you've noticed for affiliates, like trying to make quick bucks, but somehow oh, hacking the system. What, what have been some of the more unique things? Uh, I just talked about this recently and there's really, there's not a lot of ways to be unique because it's a phone call because it's a live mm -hmm. phone call. It's someone on the line. It's either someone's on the line or not. So you have to at least have someone on the phone. So with that mystery shoppers are easily one of the harder ways to spot. I'm sorry. One of the harder types of fraud to spot because mm -hmm. it sounds like someone legit is on the phone and right it's it's like you got to kind of use logic to wean them out yeah wean them out and just try to try to really identify is this a legit shopper or not because mm -hmm. on our network side of the business because we have two sides of our business the media buying in-house and the in the network side we see this or we did see this all the time because mm -hmm. uh we would work with a lot of just random affiliates but that's one of the more unique ways of how they slip in mystery shoppers and yeah. now we see that affiliates will go out there and buy ads let's say they'll buy they'll buy ads on google and they'll mm -hmm. drive in legit calls but they'll also mix in mystery shoppers to make right. an even higher profit margin so, so when you say mystery yeah. shopper you're saying a fake caller knowing the script to get a lead yeah so someone let's just say it's auto insurance yeah and there's an affiliate that is on that campaign and they, they don't want to do things the right way. They want to do things the easy and the wrong way. So they'll take their phone number and hire just individuals who will make phone calls on their behalf mm -hmm. and they'll follow a script and they'll get an auto insurance quote and right. they'll just go through all that and they'll wait till that billable duration is met. Yeah. maybe a little bit longer to make it look a little bit more legit and then they'll okay. they'll get off the call and so it shows that okay this was a legit phone call that came through but they've never they never are able to close these callers right. so 
unless you can prove it, the affiliate is technically in the right there, but they're just going to not in the right, but it's, it's very hard to prove that they did something unless you can get, you know, their ad spends and their metrics right. and like that. So that's, right. that's one of the more unique ways I see it evolving. Mystery shopping itself isn't that unique, but how they make it work, that's mm -hmm. unique. And mm -hmm. it kind of sucks too. Yeah, absolutely. Especially for, you know, I'm sure offer owners for yourself for the network side. Um, what are the, so, you know, we don't want to obviously talk too much on how to scan the system. Like what are the, <laughs> okay. uh, for, what are the verticals that you've seen that are, I mean, we, we know the evergreen verticals for paper call or like finance, insurance, um, mm -hmm. uh, home improvement, like you said too. Uh, what are the ones that are kind of picking up steam now as like we've previously talked about how kind of budgets are quietly booming. Um, where are those areas that you're seeing um, open up to paper call budgets outside of the traditional? Uh, I'm seeing legal grow big time. Insurance is, yeah, insurance is always going to keep growing. The subprime market is, is definitely always going to have its ups and downs after a recession. There's definitely big time budgets that come in for, for uh, let's say, debt settlement, student loan consolidation. We don't work in student loan, but we see that it's out there and it's growing. Mm -hmm. um, those ones definitely are, are, are still big, but we see that legal is, is, is growing. Medical is something that I'm paying close attention to. Yeah. Things like chiropractors, physical therapists, mm -hmm. uh, med spas, even mm -hmm. just different types of alternative medicine where there are higher profit margins. And so right. these, let's say clinics or just medical based companies, can benefit through a performance model because the margins are higher enough. So things on a localized side like legal uh, and, and medicine are, are two things that we're really focused on right now. Okay, cool. Get, just getting into the mindset of an affiliate um, testing out this new vertical, what would be your internal approach on kind of understanding a new vertical like medical? Um, what's, your, yeah, what's your methodology of getting in the mind of the consumers? It's a good question. Uh, first, I would really look at if I was that person, where would I go first? Because getting into the mindset of that consumer, it's, it's, it's kind of like, what's the urgency of this product? Is it, is it something that's needed now or is it something that's just discretionary? So mm -hmm. if, my, if I need a plumber, it's most likely because I may have a broken pipe and I need to get that plumber now. So I'm going to go yeah. on Google and I'm going to figure out where's that plumber. Whereas if I need to go and maybe refinance my home or uh, speak with an attorney about setting up an estate, well, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's more education involved in that. And you have to, you have to get that user to go into a funnel that educates them before you actually ask them to take that call to action. So I would look at it first as, what's the urgency of this product or service? And then you can position your media plan to match that. So I look at, I always try to look at things as like a funnel. And so if I'm looking at that plumber model, it's a, it's a pretty short funnel. You just yeah. got to get that person to see your ad before any other ad in a way. But if I'm trying to get that person to maybe learn about, um, let's just say uh, like well, actually the example I said in the state plan, well, maybe I can educate them further on Facebook and get yeah. them into uh, on my lander and get them into an email list and, and nurture them there. And then, uh, and then make that conversion later and then as well expand my brand presence. So I look at it as where is this consumer most likely going to go to first? What's the urgency mm -hmm. of the product? And then from there you understand like what steps they, they're going to take. Also, it's pretty simple too, just to figure out who's making it work online. So there's really not an industry out there that someone's not trying to monetize. So you don't have to be someone who's the, the, the first to market. If you mm -hmm. want to figure out what it's like to get an estate or a will for yourself, go out and figure out who's doing it the right way and yeah. emulate their process. Legal yeah. Zoom's a great example of that for wills and estates. And Put yourself in, oh, I'm going to go and get a will. I'm going to get an estate. I'm going to make my way eventually to a phone call. And yep. then I'm going to monitor how I did that. I like doing that. That's fun too. Because then you can really pick up, oh, I see what they did there. They put me yeah. into their, their email sequence. I didn't reply to that email. They sent me another sequence. Now I'm going to respond to that. 
it's just get, put yourself into the make yourself a consumer and that's the best way to start absolutely i you're like i like hearing like your affiliate mindset the marketing mindset um and we kind of jumped forward a little bit there's a bit of gap too is because <clears throat> for you you start off running affiliate campaigns but you've since grown uh, agency side network side as well how yeah. did uh, those days come to be and like and how do you still find time to practice the affiliate mindset oh yeah the uh I wish I had more time to practice that, but I still can in a way, just from a uh, like a, a strategic role. But essentially, after about four years, I realized that well, there wasn't there wasn't a lot of paper call back then. Uh, there was Commission Junction, Impact Radius had some. I don't even know who else. Maybe Linkshare. Uh, mm -hmm. there, were, there weren't a lot, and so I was seeing that there aren't a lot of offers. I don't like how a lot of these networks handle paper call because they don't, if I feel as if I know more than my affiliate manager and no shots at those networks that I mentioned, I'm not saying those, it's just, mm -hmm. it was so new that it was kind of hard to really convey the message I was, I was trying to get to, to my affiliate manager. Um, right. I don't know if that makes sense, but essentially yeah. I, I was kind of managing too much when I should just be the affiliate. So I thought, well, I have access to all these paper call offers. I work with a lot of direct clients too. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of affiliates. Uh, I might as well just open this up to them too. Cause then as well, I can learn more from them. Yeah. I'll always like chatting with these affiliates. So if they're putting up numbers, there's something to talk about there. So I started the network and I just kind of, just kind of took off from there and just grew naturally. That was, that was Paolo. Uh, so yeah, before I didn't really have a name. Uh, I had one, I had one name and it was called get me profit. Worst Ooh, I name like it. <laughs> I, dude, <laughs> think about, think about signing all state when the contract says, get me profit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why work. do you think we moved from stack that money just to STM? It's very okay. similar. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I just decided to put the name Paulo on it, uh, mm -hmm. which is a derivative of my last name. And then kind of just like how a network grows in a way. If, if anyone works for a network, it's just people, more people come to you, more affiliates come to you. You want to, you want to serve them and, uh, and, and make some progress with them. And then I decided to grow the team where I needed help. Uh, and then Paulo just kept growing and growing and growing to in different areas. And now I'm on zoom with you today. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, you must have, I mean, I think we've discussed this before. Actually, I'm pretty sure we did. Um, as you know, every, everything's so volatile these days with Facebook in particular. Um, where have you seen, have you seen quite the sway of uh, affiliates moving over and testing out paper call and do they stick or do they get confused and frustrated and then float back? What, what does it look like over the last like 10 to 12 months? Yeah, I, I love that question. Um, yeah, with the volatility that I see with just the media channels that affiliates advertise on buy media on they they will go and look for different ways to just make revenue and so paper calls is one of those i guess you can call it a niche of affiliate marketing in which i see a bunch of affiliates come in and they're just like hey what's this all about yeah what's the deal here uh when student loan was exploding I don't know, 2014, 2015, I saw so many just traditional CPA publishers come over and say, I need to get a piece of this action because yeah. they realize that it's, oh, it's just a different funnel, but you're not going to get a lot of those just big surges of, of, uh, well, not a big surge, but you're not going to get a lot of those random verticals that just seem to pop instantly on paper call. You, yeah. you will see them at times, but you're not going to get it as much as you would with a lot of different CPA offers. So, when we get these affiliates that come over to us, yeah, a lot of them don't stick because they have to change their mindset. Mm -hmm. It's not just drive that person to a landing page and hopefully that they buy. And not, I'm not saying all of CPA is like that. Definitely yeah. can be uh, much different. But you have, to, you have to nurture that person in a way where you want to get them to make that phone call because a phone call is... You, a phone call is very difficult 
for an individual to make while they're browsing online. They don't want to, they don't want to stop, you know, scrolling their newsfeed on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They don't want to stop reading that article. They want to keep reading that article. So if you want to get them to stop and make that phone call, you have to, you have to, you have to have a high trust factor with them. So we see a lot of publishers come over and they think it's just super easy to set up a campaign and whatever. I'll throw up a funnel, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. And Mm -hmm. it can work for some, it definitely does for some. Uh, But a lot of the evergreen, I call them evergreen affiliates that are just always producing phone calls and whatever industry they step into, Mm -hmm. they know how to do it the right way because they know that I have to instill enough trust into this user to actually want to make this phone call that uh, they do, they do make that phone call. And so I have to build my funnel as like a brand would because that brand that a user is going to make a purchase based upon how well a brand is, is marketing themselves. So yeah. yeah, I see a lot of people come over and unfortunately they don't stick, but we, the ones we do see stick make it work and they make it work really well because they know setting things up as a brand would creating yeah. their own brand is where the success falls. I hope that makes so, sense. I just, I just went on a tangent. It, no, no. I mean, it, it does. Okay. I mean, it's just, it's not as uh, crystal clear as everyone hopes it, it would be. Um, sure. What, how does how does remarketing play a factor then? Um, I mean, every affiliate testing out paper call must be, unless it's a high intent offer where someone, like you said with the plumber, when they need to fix pipe, they need to fix pipe, they call. But when it's not a high intent offer and you need to build trust over time, um, how much are affiliates remarketing? Uh, yeah, I love that. Uh, so I don't see a ton of affiliates remarketing, but I'm starting to see it more right now. So I would say... 2000 end of 2019 and into this year it's really brand focused build yourself as if you were a brand and so if you're going to build yourself as a brand you need to you need to get your you need to, you need your user to see you more and so remarketing helps with that and so some of the stronger affiliates that we see yeah. use remarketing not necessarily to make that person act but to continue to build their brand and nurture that lead so when they do want to make that purchase or learn more and speak to a rep they know exactly who to go to so if they have been seeing this uh if they've been seeing this let's say uh attorney brand up over and over they know now know okay it's time for me to get that uh will or estate if we're going to keep using that and now i'm going to go to that brand that i've been seeing and make that action so it's super long tail in terms of marketing to that user you got to make sure your cost works there but uh, you always want to just, if you're remarketing and you're using paper call as the end of the funnel, you don't want to rush for that phone call too fast. And so remarketing right. helps, gets them into maybe their email list and absolutely take action. Uh, I, I, I hope that helps. It totally does. Um, okay. <clears throat> just as you're saying that, I, uh, I knew I wanted to ask you uh, uh, before the call ends is about voice search and and what's that looking like on on your end because it's not something that's getting talked about i know we're going to have a speaker on uh voice search for um affiliate world but um you know it's still not very topical and i think it's very foreign um but everyone knows it's happening I, I, our speakers yeah. going to be discussing how to optimize their um optimize your content for voice search but what are you seeing on the paper call side with like alexa's popping up and how you're just telling google to turn down your music um yeah, yeah. like what's that look like for paper call i haven't seen anything with that just yet i'm going to assume that that's going to be something where it's in a way if uh uh, man, I mean, if you're if you're going to be asking Alexa for, hey, find me a you know find me a plumber, yeah. Uh, it's essentially, as we see that the as we see these smart home speakers or things like that evolve, they're going to learn more about their users, and right. their the user is going to be more dependent on the the speaker. Let's say so, like Alexa, so they're going to rely on Alexa for their search rather than getting on their phone and doing it. So. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen really anything there yet. I definitely think we will because as mm-hmm. someone relies more and more on the speaker, then brands and advertisers will rely on it more because they know that no longer is this user in control of their searching habits and searching behavior by just Googling something. They're now in, in like, they're now trusting that Alexa is going to find them the best option. 
So right. in, in order for me to position myself in front of Alexa, I need to do certain things. So we haven't seen anything near, there yet, but that's how I imagine paper call is going to integrate into that. Absolutely. So <clears throat> outside of voice search, like, is there anything that you're forecasting that's really going to have an effect on the industry or is it more just about advertisers realizing and they're waking up, they're like, we need to be allocating more budget. And then you'll just start to see other kind of verticals and industries popping up. Like what's, what do you see uh, for 2021 that's going to be rolling out or end of this year? Uh, this uh, year? Cool. Uh, no, I know. I like that. So I look at it as, I, I kind of look at the lead gen industry in terms of just form fills and leads themselves as an indicator of what's going to happen with paper call because all of these advertisers are buying leads for one reason to get them on the phone. Yeah. Well, not one reason there could be some others in there, but to get them on the phone, that's the, that's the main reason that most of these lead gen offers exist. Now with different regulations and how let's say robocalls have really popped up in this space. Yeah. It's more difficult to get that user on the phone. So these advertisers are going to see their connection rates lower with the leads right. they purchase. Their CPAs are going to increase, and then they're going to have to figure out what's the solution here to continue my, my business model. And so getting that person to call in or getting that person on the phone for that advertiser is now going to be an obligation a marketer is going to need to adopt as their own rather than just, right. I've done my job, I've gotten them into a lead form, it's, I now have to get this person on the phone from my advertiser, which that advertiser is going to pay way more for because it's a live consumer, yeah. but that's going to be something I, I, I boldly predict. I don't know. And maybe it will be 2023 when it happens, but uh, that's something I see evolving. Yeah. And, uh, and I think the marketers and the, the, the agencies and the networks that adopt that and realize that leads are harder to get on the phone and I need to help get these people on the phone for my clients, they're going to be the ones who win. Now, Absolutely. from the marketing perspective of, well, well, shit, I mean, I just send people to a form. Like, what am I supposed to do after that? Well, you could still continue to do that. And this is something I'm hoping that I could speak about at AWE. It's building those, those bridges of, yeah. yeah, you don't have to drive for that call right away, but What's that, what's that bridge you're going to build to make that consumer want to call? Maybe it's SMS, maybe it's chat, maybe it's mm -hmm. email, things like that. So it's going to be more bridge building to that phone call. And we're going to see advertisers buy less leads and more calls from what I see. I see some of our clients say that now. Some of our clients mm -hmm. are just, yeah, we'll buy your leads, but we want your phone calls right. and as well. Uh, across the board, maybe we would get a 60% connection rate. Well, now we're only getting 35% with other networks. Yeah. So that's where I see things moving. Uh, but like I was kind of saying, the, the, the conversational marketing side of the business, where it's not just push for that phone call, but have a conversation with that person before you connect yeah. them. Yeah. I, I love that shit. That's really yeah. where I want to focus. That's where we're focused. We're focused on SMS. And I think more and more marketers will adopt that. Yeah, absolutely. It goes back to what you're saying is building the trust first so that people are much more inclined to make that call. Yeah. Um, for, so <laughs> just want to be mindful for the time, but like if you were to tell, um, cause there, I mean, the affiliates that'll be listening to this and watching this, uh, you know, good chance they haven't tried a uh, paper call. What are some of the, the first few steps or some good basic principles uh, or things that they should just know getting into it um, that you want to let them know? I guess if they want to try paper call and they, and they haven't tried it before, just educate yourself more before you actually start. So educate yourself on what industries work and then why they work for paper call and why one doesn't work for paper call. Mm -hmm. The reason why products and consumer based products work and for e-com and not calls necessarily. They do, but not to the extent e-com does. So first, educate yourself on what industries are primed for paper call and why. And then put yourself into that user experience of what did they do to make that phone call happen? And then you'll learn more about what it takes to actually make that phone call. Mm -hmm. And be, be honest about it where you would say, would I make this phone call if I was looking for this product? because this site doesn't really instill a lot of trust. So I don't want to make that phone call. And 
as a marketer, you should know, I could probably do it this way better. And so educate yourself on that. And then from there, I mean, it's just, it's just really now, how do I take this and monetize it into, into revenue with, let's say a good network or a good advertiser, yeah. or yeah. if you're already doing lead gen and you're working with an advertiser, tell them, I want to generate phone calls for you. If any advertiser says, I don't want phone calls. There must be something wrong. So yeah. Yeah. tell them that be like, listen, I went through this process myself. I think I could generate phone calls for you. And I think you could close them better. And I think your CPA would be much lower out shit. If an advertiser ever, uh, if I ever said that to an advertiser, they'd be like, all right, man, what's the, what's the catch? Yeah, this, right. this sounds too good. So I would just recommend educating yourself and then becoming a consumer in that call based industry. Mm -hmm. uh, sounds kind of simple, but it's, it's actually very, very helpful when you want to really learn how calls work. That's perfect, man. I appreciate it. Learned lots on the call. Um, appreciate your time. That's been a, this has been great. Totally. And uh, I look forward to chatting with you some more, man. Likewise, brother. I look forward to seeing you. All right. Cheers. All right. Later.